I am Dr. Chandrasekhar, Chief of Dermatology, Cutis Hospital, Bangalore. I am in front of you to talk about one very important issue with respect to hair science, that is hair loss in patients who are taking treatment for various cancerous conditions or malignancies. This is typically called as chemotherapy induced hair loss. That means that when the patient is undergoing chemotherapy or in fact radiotherapy or the gray ray therapy whatever it is, electron beam induced therapy, it is likely that they lose their hair. And it so happens within finishing the first session of chemotherapy or first session of radiotherapy or electron beam. We know that the human body has got two very very important active sites where the metabolism is very high and the cells proliferate. That is the first tissue is the bone marrow where it produces blood. The second one is hair follicle which produces hair cells from the dermal papilla. So whenever you are disrupting this particular mechanism or phenomena of growth, you are going to likely arrest and destroy the growing tissue. So the basic therapy for all cancers is to stop the growth of the cells to stop them at their growing phase antigen. Similar effect will happen on the hair follicle also. So various types of chemotherapy for various types of cancers and malignancies is likely to disrupt the growing phase of the hair follicle called antigen. There are two kinds of hair loss which occur in cancer patients. One is a telogen effluvium probably because of the disease itself, the hair falls. And the second one is dystrophic antigen hair loss, where the chemotherapy, radiotherapy and other therapies can destroy the hair follicle in its growing phase. Post chemotherapy or radiotherapy, again the hair loss starts because there is arrest of antigen phase and once they finish their chemotherapy, the hair will start shedding again. Sometimes maybe after six months or one year of therapy, <coughs> it's called as telogen effluvium. It can be an acute telogen effluvium or a chronic telogen effluvium. Now we come to know that the hair loss is a possible outcome, a definitive possible outcome when the patient is on chemotherapy. To answer these questions, chemotherapy is not going to have a permanent loss. Sometimes radiotherapy can induce permanent loss in the hair in that particular area because it destroys the follicles permanently. We have seen patients of radiotherapy having a permanent hair loss and we have done treatment. So chemotherapy induced hair loss only happens when the patient is on active chemotherapy, probably even the first session of their chemotherapy, maybe two or three weeks after that, they start losing, shedding their hair. And it's going to be a complete or near complete hair loss when they take chemotherapy. Yes, there are centers who make the allergen hair to rest in the allergen phase itself by doing a cool therapy. That simply makes uh, the sense that the, your scalp is cooled to a below 0 degree centigrade when you are on infusion of your chemotherapy drug. So one side the infusion is going on, another side the scalp is cooled. How does this cooling of the scalp helps? It helps, see all of us know that when you take a drug or an IV infusion, it percolates across the body. It goes to every cell of the body, correct? So similarly, 
it is going to enter the hair follicle also. When you cool the hair follicle, the circulation in the hair follicle will come down so that the drug penetration to the hair follicle reduces. That is the way it protects. But it is not a foolproof therapy because the effect of the drug can be for more than about 12 weeks or 6 weeks or 4 weeks. So when you take a cool therapy for the scalp while on infusion, it is not going to guarantee the prevention of hair loss when you are out of your infusion because the effect of the drug will last for about 10 to 12 days also. But however, this is going to minimize. There are centers who practice this. Of course, this therapy may not be possible in certain types of cancers like hematological cancers and where they use platinum uh, derived medicines. Then the second therapy, similarly there is an advancement therapy with respect to prevention of hair loss while on chemotherapy is topical epinephrine. As I already told, to decrease the hair, circulation to the hair follicle, you can constrict the hair follicle, uh, the vessels around the hair follicle. There is a microvasculature around the hair follicle. You can constrict the vessel so that the drug will not penetrate into the follicle. So topical epinephrine is available. Alone, it's difficult to get. It comes in a solution. It's difficult to get a cream form in India, but it also comes with uh, topical lidocaine and all. Probably we can definitely. Uh, apply that. Post chemotherapy, once you finish your schedule, probably dermatologist would see you and they probably would advise you some of the topical medicines like a minoxidil at a 2% or a 5% depending on the uh, race and depending on the sex. Then probably they will also use a drug called bimetombrast which are going to stimulate the allergen phase. See, while chemotherapy you have lost all the hair follicles. So the hair has to come to a growing phase. It has to enter the growing phase or a growth phase that is called allergen. And of course, now that is rate list uh, therapy is the low level laser therapy that also modulates allergen. Then we have uh, therapies like the peptides topically. Now, of course, this is a new science. There are not many studies available with respect to a chemo induced hair loss with respect to peptides. But however, if you look at the concept how the peptide work, like in inducing allergen and maintaining allergen, probably the peptide would work. So there are a lot of peptides available and dermatologists would also prescribe peptides for your hair regrowth after your chemotherapy. There can be a lot of questions with respect to this. See how to go about all this. I think primarily I would like to emphasize two, three things in front of you. One, it's inevitable, inevitable that you lose hair when you are on anti-cancer therapy or a chemotherapy. Number two, it is not going to be a permanent hair loss. It is going to be a dystrophic allergen effluvium and the hair is going to regrow. To regrow it fast, probably you need to do something and your, your first uh, priority should be to meet a dermatologist who is nearby you and take his advice regarding regrowth. As I already told you, there are therapies like radiotherapy where there is a permanent scarring and you can definitely do <coughs> hair transplantation in that particular area to regrow the hair very, very nicely. We have treated patients like that and they have regrown the hair after transplantation in that particular area. So if there are any questions regarding understanding of chemotherapy or treatment of chemotherapy induced hair loss, we are there to help you. You can consult us if you have such issues or if your friends have such issues or if your family members have such issues. Thank you.